joint, good joint under my side bag. Hello, and welcome to the THC show. Those of you who are regular viewers of the show will realize that I'm in a little different setting today. Uh, we have taken the THC show on the road, and uh, we're here upstairs in uh, what is a legal cannabis store. So uh, we're going to be interviewing Carol Gwilt uh, about what, uh, what it's like to have a legal cannabis store, how she got it, and all of that kind of stuff coming right up. Um, legalization, uh, so-called legalization, uh, if you're new to the show, I don't want to give you the wrong impression uh, that, uh, that we think that we have legalization of Canada, cannabis in Canada. We certainly uh, do not, in our opinion. Um, what we have is the Trudeau cartel deciding to forcibly take over the cannabis industry that was entrenched, vibrant, and decades old, um, and remain all of the, the evils of prohibition against anybody that wasn't part of the cartel. So this hostile takeover of the cannabis industry by the Trudeau cartel excludes most of the people they had been involved in cannabis production and distribution and protesting as well uh, over, the, over the last number of years. Most of them don't get to be involved in legalization. Uh, this past uh, 420 here in Vancouver, there were several hundred vendors between the three or four different 420 uh, events that happened that day, and all of them are still considered illegal. In fact, uh, the police since 420 have been actively trying to shut down the different pop-up uh, cannabis uh, places, uh, the illegal places, and including this past uh, Saturday, which was the International Joint Day, uh, they were met with a, 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 an armed force of about 30 police officers and a letter from the mayor stating that they're just not going to tolerate this anymore. So the, the fight for legalization at this stage of the game has resulted in our cries for legalize and regulate to be met by a government that took that to heart, decided that they could do that, and that they would give us legalization where we'd be allowed to possess cannabis, and in most of the provinces you're even allowed to grow four of your own plants, but otherwise you're going to have to get your cannabis from government stores. So <laughs> this is not the legalization that we were fighting for at all. We wanted an end to the wasting of tax dollars. We wanted all the people that were involved in growing cannabis to no longer be criminals. We wanted no penalties for pot of any sort, certainly not the criminal law involved. And the government decided you can have cannabis, but you gotta buy it off of us. And the us in this case is all those people that qualify to get licenses. And that's not most people by any stretch. It's a long, hard battle to get a license, and some people have, most people have not. The people that have not are still the ones that are putting up their booths at the different 420 rallies this upcoming Cannabis Day, and they would still like to be legal. There's a lot of commotion in that underground cannabis world at this point because of the moves by the government to shut them down about whether or not they should even be selling cannabis at this upcoming Cannabis Day. So the legalization that we've got is not the legalization that we were fighting for. We are not done yet by any means. The Trudeau cartel has decided that cannabis is a cash cow. That even though it doesn't take much more to bring it to the marketplace, especially if that's the way farmers wanted to do it, as most of the other fruits and vegetables and herbs that are out there, they're going to impose harsh taxes and harsh regulations and restrictions that are going to inflate the price of cannabis to the point where it's even beyond what it was during Prohibition. I guess it depends where you are for that. We're here at a legal government store, although it's not a government store. This is a privately owned store that is in the government system, legal in that sense. They need to buy their cannabis, unseen, I believe. We'll find out all of that stuff from the provincial distribution network that's also involved with alcohol. They have set prices on all of that. It comes to them at a price that is already inflated by several levels of taxation. So, what we need to do is continue 
that which we were doing. The last thing that we can do is settle for what we've been offered right now. This is nowhere near good enough. The cannabis is suspect. We don't know if we can trust these big, massive producers of cannabis. Thankfully, there's, there's craft growers now in the marketplace with smaller operations. And I think in some cases, at least, run by people who do care a lot about the cannabis and that want to get it there. The illegal stores are still being harassed and hassled by the CSU here in British Columbia, but all across Canada, wherever they pop up, they're being met with harsh opposition. The CSU in British Columbia has been running around doing its best to shut down any storefront that would be offering cannabis for medical purposes. We know the troubles that they're having over in Vancouver Island with the Victoria Buyers Club and with Ted Smith and the $6.5 million fine that he's been issued or him and his, his organization have been issued. And the second raid that just happened not that long ago that's resulted in Ted Smith applying for a court injunction against the CSU. And we'll see where all that ends up. Meanwhile, the Secoras with the S&M Sweet Shop on Seashell, Seash facing all kinds of heavy fines and, and interference by the CSU, and they just recently won. Since last, last week's show, we've gotten news from the Secoras that uh, they've won their court battle. There's still a few things to be worked out, but they essentially saved themselves about a half a million dollars in the process. These are medical stores that the CSU is going after. The medical dispensaries. Prior to this so-called legalization here in Vancouver, there was somewhere around 180 dispensaries that had sprung up in the previous years. All of them with large clientele, all of them with cannabis edibles in doses that work for people that are needing it for medical purposes. In Vancouver, in British Columbia, they decided to jump up ahead of legalization and try to regulate all these dispensaries. The regulation of dispensaries was just a code word for let's get rid of most of them and let's make it really difficult to own a dispensary and let's try to make sure that the ones that are there are going to be able to conform to legalization when it happens. And they were taking over $30,000, closer to $35,000 from each of the dispensaries for a one-year license to operate if they could qualify by not being too close to each other, not being too close to schools, not having edibles available, many other things. They took away seven revenue streams. And then legalization happened. And some of those dispensaries got to transition into the legal system. The other ones, many of them could see what was happening. They took their money and closed up. Some of the other ones didn't close up. They decided to keep on going. Most of them were shut down by force. We still have a few things going on along those lines. I'm not sure how all that's happening. But they closed down the blue door, which was the main access for people in downtown east side to get somewhat affordable cannabis. They paid a visit to us in the last year to take pictures of what we have and go inside of our RV at the CSP, the Cannabis Substitution Program, and threaten us, tell us to stop or else. Medical cannabis. By the government's own definition, their legalization is non-medical. They're not selling medical cannabis. They're selling rec cannabis. So if you want to get wrecked, you can go to a store and get some cannabis and go and get yourself wrecked. But if you want to get healed, if you want to feel better, well, that's not the store for you. And the real horrible thing is, is that the stores that were there for those people and for you, if you need to get healed by cannabis, if you have needs of high dose edibles and affordable cannabis as a daily user, you're the ones who got left out of this legalization. When we were fighting for legalization, the medical users were first and foremost our, our goal. Let's protect the people that need it the most. During the run-up to the election, Trudeau spouted off at different uh, uh, political events that they were putting on, 
that the medical patients would have nothing to worry about with, with legalization. That they could just go through the government system and use the government stores. Not mentioning that the government prices would be way out of reach for most people who have to use large amounts on a daily basis. Not to mention that edibles that are 10 milligrams are only the right dose for those people who have never used it before. And that people with large requirements for medical cannabis in the form of edibles need hundreds of milligrams most of the time. And then we're hit with a public health emergency of overdose deaths from a poison drug supply. Turns out cannabis edibles is the way out. Learned that back in 2004 with the Herb School. That high dose cannabis edibles, and they're not high dose. I hate saying high dose cannabis edibles. I only want to say that because the government is so insane with their such low dose cannabis. But really 50 milligrams, 75 milligrams, 80 milligrams, that's that's a reasonable regular dose for most people. And some people with serious needs are way above that. And for what we're dealing with with the cannabis substitution program, with people that are addicted to the opioids and wanting off of those drugs because, for numerous reasons, not the least of which is the fact that the drug supply is poisoned and they're dying in, in ridiculous numbers, they need many hundreds of milligrams to get through that week-long, four to seven day period called withdrawal, that is the real barrier to people getting off of those drugs. Especially the people that we're seeing that are visible addicts on the downtown east side that are so messed up. It's, it's so hard to see the human tragedy that's going on there. The way those poor people are, are stuck, you know, using their drugs and living their lives. They all want off. They're all hoping and wishing for treatment. Some of them are on a list waiting. Many of them have been through themselves already a number of times. It doesn't work for the most part. Unfortunately, it seems that a large amount of the treatment centers are really not interested in having it work. They're interested in collecting dollars for having people in the beds and, and in their program. And they'll tell you right off the bat, probably don't succeed first few times you try. Because it pays them to have you keep coming back. Cannabis high-dose edibles has been credited by hundreds and thousands of people of being the way that they got off of those hard drugs. Cannabis edibles of hundreds of milligrams is it's super effective if used properly in assisting people through withdrawal. That should be front page news. That should be plastered all over the place for people to understand that. Because most of the deaths that are happening due to the overdose crisis are not a result of the visible addicts on the downtown east side getting bad drugs. Only 14% of the deaths are happening on the downtown east side of Vancouver. 86% are throughout the other different demographics of British Columbian society. Young people dying alone for the most part. People that were introduced to opioids in most cases by doctors, in some cases by friends, but in most cases by doctors. Doctors who willfully overprescribed these opioids, especially when OxyContin came on the market because they were sold a bill of goods by the company, by Purdue Pharma, that it was non-addictive because it had a, a coating that was time-released and it was non-addictive. Purdue knew full well that it was just as addictive as any other opioid because that's how opioids work. They, if used over a period of time, they build neural networks that require a refilling as they grow and grow. And when you try to stop that neural network of receiving the opioids that it's requiring, it's sheer hell. Really, really hard physically and emotionally painful to go through. So Purdue Pharma knew that. They convinced the doctors that that wasn't the case. They tried to hide all that information. They've been involved in multi-billion dollar lawsuits they're now, that were successful, but have now been put on hold by judges who are not satisfied that those people at the top of the company have paid enough of a price because they're all billionaires and they're not going to spend any time in jail, and that's not okay. But the point is, is that we've got a large amount of Canadian people now addicted to opioids, especially because once it all came out, what was happening with OxyContin and the overprescription of opioids, well, now the College of of doctors 
decides that they should not be prescribing anywhere near the amounts that they are were at that time. And so they all started trying to take all their patients off of them, mostly unsuccessfully. The people couldn't stop. They let the doctors think that they had stopped. In fact, it didn't matter because the doctors just weren't prescribing for them anymore. They got their friends and family to help them out, and when they wouldn't help them out, they'd just go and steal it from the medicine cabinets. When they couldn't find a supply, they end up on the downtown east side of Vancouver, down some back alley dealing with a guy in a trench coat. And then they take it back to wherever they live, and they do it all by themselves because nobody can know. They're ashamed of their addiction. They can't have their bosses know they'll lose their job. They can't tell anybody within their family they'll see them as weak. They can't tell the doctors because the doctor is the one who took them off in the first place and they're allowed. So they use because they have to, because they don't know how to get off it. And that's the real shame. Because with cannabis edibles, people can get through withdrawal and we have hundreds and hundreds of those people that we've rescued in the last six and a half years of the cannabis substitution program. And yet, the government won't allow it. They say that people that need to use high-dose edibles, although you can grow your four plants, you can extract cannabis, you can make your own edibles, as if somehow if they were dangerous, that's safe. As if somehow if it's about keeping it out of the reach of children, that that's going to be not a way that children are going to access this from the edibles that their, their parents are making or their family is making. None of it makes any sense. It's all just about making dollars. It's all just about saving their asses. And that's been the, the nexus of the legalization that we've been dealt at this point. And because those people are left out, the very people that we fought so hard for, the ones that we knew needed to be put ahead of everybody else, because the government system does not allow for easy, reasonable, low barrier access, for farmers to just be able to produce cannabis in whatever form they want, and bring it to the marketplace and have it charged accordingly. Because that's the case, it's 419. If you haven't got one rolled or your pipe's not filled, now would be a good time. I got one more minute, you got one more minute. Because that's the case, that the medical people are down and out when it comes to this cartel of legalization, that is the reason that I can't support the legal stores yet. And I want to. I want to because many of my friends are involved on the legal side. Those that made it in. We're going to talk about that during the show. But at this point, we've arrived at 420, and we all know what that means. Well, 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 Glenn Wells is in, is in the building. positions here. <laughs> oh, it's a whole oh, yeah. new... oh, yeah, i got to turn this around, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just so we can make sure nobody's sure. doing can, something wrong. We can wrong. see it's all going. Yeah. You didn't even light my joint, you know? You didn't light your joint? You didn't even light the oh, joint. it's 420. It's a good time to light the joint. Let's do that. Uh, 419 <laughs> still. I still got 419. Oh, no, there it is. 420. 420. Yeah, I got 420. There you go. Wow. wow. Glenn and I were like we're like twins separated at birth, you know. We got our, uh, our gold cases. Yeah, there. yeah. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you. <laughs> She's uh, a wonderful awesome. lady. Yeah, I, mean, I know that. Right? I know, eh? Right? You got a so, hug from her. So we got a bunch of stuff coming up here. Uh, um, first up is the glass gathering. You think we might drive up there? I guess, eh? Yeah. Yeah, to be. Uh, I might. I'm not sure. I'm so busy down something. here in Vancouver. You let me know. It's hard to get away, but I thought maybe on the Saturday I might to take a drive up there and spend a few hours. That's the 20th, right? Is no, it? no, no, the 20th. No, my 20th, 21st, 22nd, 20th. It'd be the yes. 23rd. 23rd, okay. 23rd. Sounds good. Because this thing is happening from Friday the 22nd? No, Thursday. Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Thursday the 22nd. Yes. Well, in that case, Saturday would be the 24th. Yeah, something like that, yeah. I'm not talking like that. All right. 100% like that. It'd be cheap on the gas and the new car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never, it's you're, never you're been back to the little Toyota you got there. It's a hybrid. Right. Yeah, it's a little. It's bigger than a little Toyota. <laughs> I can think of little bats and Toyotas uh, and stuff like that. I'm just comparing it to my large. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're your band. Large Toyota. <laughs> we, all know, we all know what that says about guys in large vehicles. I guess, yeah, I guess I guess I will step right into that one. <laughs> I don't need a large vehicle. 
And apparently I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I not me. All right, I'm kidding. I'm tripping right here. That's a story for another day, Jesus. isn't it? We won't get into any of that. Jeez. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you guys so, can see Glenn flush. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. interesting. Yeah. I, you know, it, it took us all this time, almost four years now. <laughs> to get me flushed. To, to, to figure out <laughs> right what it takes to make you blush. <laughs> so I think you might drive up there too. Yeah, yeah, if you want to go with me to that, I only have well, to we take might, it. We might do it separately, I'm not sure. Well, I why pay for two gases when you can pay for one? Oh, I don't know. Let's, save the, are, let's save the environment. There might be reasons. <laughs> I never know. But yeah, maybe we're yeah. We haven't made any of those. Gotta, we're not going to make it on the show. Even though this is the 420 you know, session here, we're not yeah. too serious. <laughs> we'll not make those arrangements. I'm going to drive by Vancouver to get there anyways. Right? Right, so I might as well just pick you up, right? Maybe. <laughs> it's like, Maybe you can take me away from my vehicle. What the hell? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll be able to get a hold of us. Either you or me, on video, whatever, you know. I like to have my car done. Oh, well, I would take you. Don't worry. I wouldn't say no, we have to stay, Neil. Of course. <laughs> you need to go, we would go. I do want to ride in your car because you have a very nice car, but I'm not sure I want to go all the way there and back. I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. All, all right, right, all right. But it is going to be a great time. It's going to be and, great. And that's the point. Uh, the glass gathering that, that happened for what more than ten times before yep. we had to shut down for the pandemic there uh, was just like the coolest of things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you get all these amazing glass blowers, these artists that are so good at their trade. They all get set up under this this communal tent. Yep. Especially when the sun goes down, and they it's blow. an amazing scene. They work in collaboration with each other to make different pieces. They they do custom pieces for people and all the glass that they put together gets put together at the end of the day in the big yep. shed yeah and, and then, then you can go like, go through the shed and then they're going to have judging on, on this stuff as well no but people can still buy ahead of time i'm sure of that they now what do they mean by glass games have you ever been there Dan, yeah. doing, doing glass games who are you talking to? who are you talking, to? Who are you, who are you talking to? <laughs> I've never, i don't know what the glass games are oh. i mean i know what uh, maybe our audience so, knows so i know what the um what the, Olympics, gallery knows. what the Olympics um, at the Prairie Harvest Cup were all about, uh -huh. and when Redbeard uh, won that thing yeah. uh, with his uh, demonstration of uh, like this super long glass yeah. that he had going on between, I think Gibson's was helping him maybe, I'm oh, not really? sure, but uh, there was some amazing glass work wow. that Redbeard did. So Redbeard did his show from there, yeah. and so there's probably way of contests, you know, who can make the pipe the quickest, uh, yeah. you know, who can make... That, that, okay, so know, that's what they mean by glass games. You know, but I would imagine it'll be fun. If Redbeard's involved, it'll be fun. Yes, you know, that's good. That's yeah, sure. it's always fun. And uh, another thing, uh, when you were talking about the Purdue family and the opioids, right. did you just hear what happened? What just happened? They paid $6 billion to not be responsible anymore that god the courts have fined them six billion dollars and that's it that's like that's like and you got a, that's like you got a hundred dollars in your pocket yep and you've been charged with something really serious yep and for six dollars you can get off on yep. it yeah that's $6 about billion that's dollars. about what it's like except it's worse than that because all you have left is 96 dollars yep. which is still most of your hundred apparently but when they've got still tens of billions of um, dollars apparently they made 10 billion dollars on it and they they took six billion oh, of it. they only got four yeah, billion yeah, no, the poor babies dollars, only yeah. got four billion to kill hundreds of thousands of people and still because they, they, oh it's going forward yeah. it's for life Right, so anybody oh that dies or anything, they, the family will not be responsible. This is sad news, I'll tell you. Yep. This is very, very sad news. To charge a billionaire, a multi-billionaire, a small portion of their billions is not a penalty at all. They are walking away scot-free. They didn't deserve that money when, in the first place. Not. And they knowingly killed people. They knowingly ruined lives. And they're not going to do any misery like Give me a break. No, well, well, Give rich me never do, break. right? They always get their way out of oh it, right? Oh, my God. No, this is very, very bad news. Yeah, I don't I, like that. I've right. heard that. I meant to mention it when you were talking about the old right that came up in my brain, oh, too. And this is what's so disgusting about the world that we're living in and the society that we find ourselves in, mm -hmm. where we're, we're sold a bill of goods that we're free people. And really, it's all corruption. It's all about the, the very rich. And we are just pawns of theirs. Yeah, and that's it. In, in, in our case... Like, I don't know what the Purdue family, I mean, I watched that series, I don't know yeah. if you did or not, yeah. and I, I don't know how good a portrayal that Maybe was. I showed it to you on Disney Channel. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, I watched it very carefully, and, and you know, they're, and they're they're showing a version there, of so. what actually happened, but yeah. you never know really behind closed doors and behind those eyes what was going on. But God damn it! I mean, they knew they were killing people. Did they want to kill people? Probably not. Probably they just wanted to make money and they didn't care. Yeah. Uh, you know, turned a blind eye. With what what we're dealing with here with the Canadian government and the cannabis substitution program, there almost seems to be a desire to eliminate the people that are being stricken by this overdose crisis. Mm -hmm. It's not bad enough that it's being monetized. It's, it's worse than that. It's almost a disdain yeah. for those people. And it's just disgusting. Uh -huh. now they're because the face, of that, the face yeah. of this overdose crisis is that hunched over homeless person smoking off the tinfoil on the downtown east side. Yep. But the true fact of the face of this overdose crisis is the, is, the, is the young person who has a whole life ahead of them, who are functioning quite well, and then they just die. Yep. And they don't know they died. I was thinking just the day before yesterday, I don't know why it came to me, I guess I saw some art somewhere that reminded me of Alan Sayers. Mm -hmm. I've lost so many people, you know, over the last six and a half years since we started this. Yep. And this, this overdose crisis is now into its eighth year. But people like Alan, I mean, a brilliant talent, mm -hmm. a wonderful young man with so much left ahead of him. And nobody knew. No. I didn't suspect it. None of his friends knew. One of his friends said he knew that sometimes he was, you know, doing some chipping or whatever. Oh, right? yeah. And Alan never knew that he died. No. Oh. You know, yeah. he just he just didn't wake up from a trip one time. That's it. Wow. Had no yeah. idea, right? Now that's wow. going on all over the place. But the people left behind, they know they lost a loved one. Yeah. This is destroying families. People are burying their young people mm -hmm. because of this overdose crisis. And we've got a government in Ottawa that has been clearly informed for the last six and a half years. Well, and certainly for the last three years that there is a, a real solution, demonstrated and proven, backed up by science, and we can't get the government to go along with it. No. Because of money. They'll just give you a clean supply. Oh, because of money. <laughs> yeah, they want, I, yeah. They, 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 <laughs> I know, eh? Yeah. 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 Uh, or is it the clean supply while you're waiting on a six month wait list to get into treatment? All of them. <laughs> really, it's like, wow. It's, a, it's, it's, it's so disgusting. It's the pharmaceutical companies that caused all this in the first place that are wanting to be the first ones in to have the solution, the pharmaceutical based solution of clean supply for the addicts, rather than having a solution that gets those people off of those drugs and onto a way better life. It is really, really quite, quite disheartening. And, and so it's taken me a while to, uh, to arrange what needed to happen. But this legalization has been going on for quite a while. We're into uh, closing in on, I think, our fourth year coming up in October yeah. here. And uh, it's time to have a look at, at what that means and what that means to the people on, on the other side of it. I mean, you people out in radio or TV land there, you get, to, you get to see my side of it every week. But I think it's really, really important that we talk to a good friend of mine who managed to get a license about that whole process and what this whole thing is really shaken out to be so far and where she thinks it might go in the future. Carol Wilt has been the most amazing activist that I've known in my time. She is such a warrior. She has done so much. She's been the, 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 real, the, real, the real power behind Weeds, Laugh and Gifts. And I know Don, you're watching, and so man, you are too. But you would tell me the same thing, that Carol really drives so much of this boat. And you're going to walk right in here, are you? I don't know. Carol's Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. 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 That was an introduction. I was trying to I'm introduce you. Here, so I figured it you, was you, you deserve <laughs> such a great introduction that I wanted to go on and on and on about Keep it. Keep going. Well, you know, we got Carol here herself, and that's a better representative than me by far of, of what you've accomplished. You were uh, Do you want to swap spots? Here, come on. Yeah, here, do that there. I won't there. complain. There you go. Right. So, you along with with Don, yeah. were so huge, the biggest by far in in the pre-legalization world. 
as far as a business, as far as an organization, uh, an organization for sure, we were the biggest. We had over well over 300 employees, and then all the ancillary employees that we you know had. And from my point of view, as an activist trying to put on protests that could make a difference, you guys were number one, no doubt about it. Weeds, glass, and gifts were right there for every one of the rallies and protests that we ever put on. Uh, whatever we needed, if we needed more, you would have given us more. Uh, Don, I, I, I can't thank you, you two enough. I wish Don was here today, but he's, he's busy. Uh, the empire yeah. continues. Yeah. So you had this huge empire uh, before so-called legalization. Yeah. And you had to pretty much shut all that down, didn't you? 38 stores and six provinces. You tried to keep some of them going? We kept five of them open until June 2019. And, and, was that, and was the closing of the final store as a result of the enforcement? Yeah, the court order. Court order, and you were given a large fine by the CSU in a couple of different cases? Yeah, a relatively small fine. <laughs> Compared, compared to Ted to, Smith. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, others. And, and Ted Smith's is a, is a relatively, completely astronomical yeah. fine compared to what anybody else in Canada has ever been fined for, to be it be child rape, yeah. murder, you name it. Mm -hmm. Whoever, who has ever received a $6.5 million yeah. fine for, before? Ted's made an, an amazing impact. You know, well, he's hurt a lot of people, hasn't he? Just yeah. an incredible yeah. amount of victims yeah. in, the, in yeah. his wake there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's like Purdue Pharma. They've killed millions. Yeah. Not. I mean, if not, I said I'd be taking not. that as a compliment, you know. And well, I guess in this world, you know, he's obviously made an impact yeah. enough that they're trying everything they can to make him go away. Yeah. And he's not going away. How could he go away? No. How could you go away? How could I go away? We have to do what we have to do. In your case, you wanted to keep going with your stores. And I learned that when, when Vancouver decided to regulate the dispensaries in absolutely outrageous ways. Yeah. That was going to take away seven revenue streams, that was going to eliminate the possibility of many of them that were there because they were too close to schools or too close to each other and yeah. all the rest of it. All these dispensaries had to pay huge fines to lawyers to go through the board of variances and manage to find and get a store and blah, 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 blah. Um, all of those dispensary owners mm -hmm. were applying for that ridiculous license from the city of Vancouver rather than all boycott it, which is what I expected would happen. They all applied. I couldn't really understand that without talking to them. So I went to all the dispensaries that I knew and many that I didn't know and I got to talk to the owners, many of them I knew and some I didn't. And, and it was a universal concept. It was, they were all of one heart. Mm -hmm. We have been helping these people. We know many of them personally. They're personally in trouble in their lives without us, mm -hmm. we need to be there for them. Mm -hmm. And they were willing to do anything, to, to, to drop those revenue streams, to go along with a crappy government plan, just to be able to continue to help their people. That was what, Some of them got into it for money, mm -hmm. most of them didn't. Mm -hmm. Those that did, had long since gone to the other side of really caring about the people that they were helping. Mm -hmm. So, when legalization happens, a whole bunch of people at the federal level mm -hmm. also want to continue. And you and Don were, were two of those for sure. I mean, why you have, of course you would have been with all the stores that you had and all the rest of that. You needed to go through whatever you had to go through to try Weeds, to get some of those stores Weeds to be was, legal. Weeds was founded, you know, on you know, the basis that it would be a recreational store, right? I mean, they, they took IDE, they like, kind of for a little while just to You found it based on what you thought the criteria would be that the government would want, I guess is what you're saying, right? For, for what? Well, you, because you had uh, people, did they have to have, uh, no, you, you didn't have um, confirmation of diagnosis, did you? No, we just, you just had to have a ah, prescription. That's right. And that didn't last long, right? Then we just dropped that and it was just, you know, over 19, right? Yeah. And, Oh, good on you. And for that, that was always the, it wasn't, you know, I, I don't want to say it wasn't about the medical user because it absolutely was. And you had medical and users still access. Is, and still is. Because you had but, higher dose But animals. that was the model of weeds was to be a recreational store, and, you know, if this ever could. In that you don't need licensed. to be a medical person to access. That that was your concept. Over 19. Why did people need to have a yeah, medical It's very low barrier. It's low barrier access. Yeah. Right? With respect to that part of the access, anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, the but prices were still high, but that's they were, they prohibition. Were market, they were market value. 
Sure, market value. At the time, in a marketplace I mean, we, were was, risking, we were risking our freedoms and, and our and you know the impact of you know thousands of people really that we. Hundred percent. No, and that's why that's why the dispensaries had the higher prices. But yeah. I don't know if you guys did. In fact, you're telling me you weren't geared to the medical people, although you did have some accessing through you. But many of the dispensaries, even though their prices were high, if it was not illegal, mm -hmm. not high because it's illegal for exactly what you said risking everything, risking their liberty, including all their possessions. Mm -hmm. But they had programs, most of them, where people that didn't have a lot of money, that had medical needs, mm -hmm. would be able to access. Did you have any of that going on there as well? Uh, we definitely showed a lot of compassion, but I don't, I don't specifically remember. You didn't have programs like some of them did. For, no. Because you weren't geared so much for the medical user. Like myself, I came into this whole business over 20 years ago as a medical user. When I right. met Don, I wanted to open a compassion club. And, right. you know, who that was my goal. And his goal was a recreational store. So you opened the kind. So we opened a kind. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after the kind, I went back to the medical market. I went back to you know the Vancouver dispensary, and I worked with Randy King in Langley, yeah, yeah. and then you know back to the dispensary. And then Don got so big and so like I don't want to say out of control because you well, know, hard to control for sure. Hard to control, right? For and sure. so I just felt compelled to to you know help that dream happen um, with him, right? And, well, he had a lot of work to do, right? <laughs> so, so, so then it just like blew out of the water, you know what I mean? But weird. you're still on that same path to a degree. For me, I am. Within, I'm still within the system the that you're in, I'm still you're still trying to have, you know. I, I am still catering to the medical user. I, yeah. I have weed that on Tuesdays is $67 an ounce. Right. Right. And it's plus tax. Um, and... I still scope everything that comes to me before I put it on the shelves, and if it has any pathogens in it or any kind of issue with it, then I rectify that with the LED. And so you're so you're buying uh, from the government the distributor provincially, um, but you get to choose which products you want to buy. So, Absolutely. So it's, when Red Beard got his Stonehouse company, uh, you can purchase his products. And, and yeah, they're coming on Thursday. Red Beard's ah. coming on Thursday, guys. Nice. Sweet. Sweet. Weeds, right glass, there. and gifts. 2500 block Kingsway. Russell restocking on my uh, <laughs> question. Why do we have to call it rec or not or medical? Why can't it just be cannabis? Because it, it's good for you no matter what. Absolutely. Right? Well, well you know my opinion on that. It's that the government doesn't want to call it recreational. Yeah, they, they don't want to. Johnny, 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 Johnny,
to try to prevent and restrict people from getting access to the, the nature's most amazing plant, despite the fact that it has none of the harms associated with those evils in our society of alcohol and tobacco and pharmaceuticals and processed food and pesticides and all those other things. It has nothing in the same categories as any of those, yet our governments have decided on behalf of those people that just want to make money off of those other products and perhaps those people that wanted to make money off of illegal cannabis to keep it illegal, to keep criminalizing people, jailing people, ruining people's lives, all of that for over a hundred years. And I'm sure they're rightfully afraid that if they come out and agree that, oh yeah, cannabis actually is medicine and sure it doesn't kill anybody ever and we really don't have any proper problems with people being addicted to it or anything like that and we never should have made it criminal, that they're probably rightfully so afraid that they'll be taking the task on that and penalized in some way or shape or form. Um, certainly the shame they should be living with already. But I think that's why their scheme to have cannabis did not include medical cannabis uh, because they felt that there was ser serious liability for them if they admit that it is medical and allow for that. And also the whole idea of things being available medically and approved by governments um, is, a, is quite a dangerous area where people can be sued, there can be lots of issues to do with medical this and that. Right? Yeah, so lots that's why the serving right uh, at the thing that they have to do in order to work in a store tells you that you can't tell anything, any customers. They're trying their best. Selling it right. Selling it, selling selling it right. right. They're yeah, selling they're trying their best right. to make right. sure right. that, that uh, you know, it's not touted as a medical yeah. beneficial yeah. product. But uh, so I think that's the majority of it there. And the problem with that, I'll uh, just add, that if they're gonna make it medical, if they're gonna allow for medical cannabis, probably because of how they operate, it's gonna be way more expensive and less <laughs> available to people that need it yeah. than, than regular cannabis that's just for getting wrecked. Yeah. You know? But the Ontario government seems to look at it as a medical thing because they're covering it for veterans. Well, this is the thing. It's, right. It, it is such, <laughs> medical it's such device. A medical device. Medical device. device. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> criminal hypocrisy. That's what I talked about all day long yeah. at 420 on the yeah. stage there. Yeah. This is criminal hypocrisy and it's all over the place. What were you going to say, Johnny? Right. Right. Well, I'm, 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 I'm nice to be here. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just taking you nice the to you. Late or, yes. I'm not, Now I'm not sure if you're late or early. In your book, you're late. In mine, you're a little early. But that's all right. We'll take it the video when we're done. All yeah. right. I know, I'm just here. Well, Johnny doesn't have a legal store, and this is about legal stores today. We're here because we're at a legal store. We're going to go downstairs and have a look down there. And, and, it's, and it's long overdue that we catch up with, with Carol or, or a representative of the legal stores to find out. You know, I think he this. wants to interrogate me a little bit. I, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Support, you know, Get the you know, there's one reason why we, we took on Health Canada. And why you know it was it was reasonable access. It was November seventeenth of twenty twelve when I mean, me and Jason Wilcox sat together when we were chess going, what the fuck are we gonna do? Right. We're gonna take away our licenses. You know what? Rest in peace, my brother. Yeah. And and the other ones that were stood yeah, there before Jason. us. From from Michelle, from Carol. There's so many there's we so many Randy Kane. Oh, I'm, Greg Williams is there's, there's Greg Williams, there's oh, Randy, there's Dr. Paul Hornby, there's Karen, Rachel David. Double, there's Tara, there's Tracy Curley, yeah. there's French Doom. There's there is a list. There's the forty two previous that have given us the keys to move forward and there's the forty two people alive that are still keeping this way. That's what I always say. Yeah. I right? We can remember those forty two before that gave us the keys to get to where we are. Because mm -hmm. we would not be where we are if it wasn't for those chosen ones that got us here, right? We can yeah, only thank them 100%. 100%. And, and, that, and, that's, and that's why Carol's here, and, and, and I mentioned we're all right here. The back that she was one of the biggest, if not her and Don with, with Weeds, the biggest contributors to this movement in the way that they did things, to Don to build the empire that he did. a huge commitment, and then seeing how far you guys have come, the sacrifices you have made, all of you, Neil, all of us, yeah. all of you out there, we're here for a reason. We're here because we support the funds. Yeah. We support the people. Absolutely. So and Carol, like I was saying. So Carol, when legalization hit and, mm -hmm. and the enforcement mm -hmm. resulted in you having to close your stores like that, yeah. uh, how quickly did you apply to, to get licensed? Probably right away, even before all that was going on, you were in the process of applying. Um, 
not at that particular time because we were told we would never get the dog. Yeah, you must have thought you'd never get a license, eh? Right? Right? We, we all thought, told, but we all thought no one would get a license. Yeah. Yeah. told by so many people, right? Don's not going to get a license. You guys can't call it weeds, blah, 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 right? Yeah. And so we hooked up with somebody who could get a license. And then that, so we went down that path for a little while, but that path went south. And I can't really talk about any more than that. Other than timelines, I'm more, more or less just looking for timelines um, at this point. So. So at what point did you apply for the license and then what, how long did it take you and what was the process like to end up with a license and what was your first store? Um, so I think we started applying in March, April. I think we started applying for Seashell because that's a store that we wanted to hang on to okay. if we could at all possible. So we just um, tried it. And you now have a license for that store? We tried it just for Don's name, just for the hell of it. Let's just put How long have you had the license? Uh, since since December 2020. Wow, so two and a half years. Yeah. Nice. And and what was how long was the process from applying to getting it? Do you remember that? Um, well, for Kingsway, it was 29 months from when we started. Months. Two months. Yeah. What's that? I have a question. Yeah. From the oh, board yeah. of barriers. When you, when you got raided from the CSU, did you pay the fine? Did you guys pay the fine or did you fight it? Because I was just thinking that maybe dog got licensed because if you had paid the fine, you'd follow the rules sort of thing. And they, they, we did pay a fine. You did pay the fine. We did, we yeah. did pay a fine. It was um, after 26, 27 months. Yeah. Of of paying rent yeah. for our, our building. And not being able to use it. Which was jacked. Like yeah. our landlord doubled the rent. Wow. When we got our board of variants and he realized that we were going to try to keep our building when we got that board of variants, he doubled our rent. Nice. Wow. And that's and then, for Yeah. And that's, so then we waited and waited and waited. Two and, and a half And then years. when we actually opened the store and then he jacked it up again. Yeah. You know, another. And then on top of that. So is it fair for me to, right? Yeah. Or city license, I was going to say. With all these cannabis is taxed with such a wide variety. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. it comes down different to fees different and different fees and different communities and everything. Yeah. This was very much a big so, part of the So, Carol, is it fair for me to ask uh, whether you cut the government a check for that fine or not? No, actually, they came with a big uh, um, Lagarda truck. And, uh, or whatever it's called. And yeah. uh, they took cash. They took, they took cash? Wow. Wow. That says, yes, that that says a lot. Like like yeah. <laughs> so so they asked for cash. They asked for cash. Because they, they just they fucking want. go back to their office and they share it around, man. They, I'm sure they could. They do. The, oh, wow. the, the, they do. the optics of potential corruption is mind-boggling. Yeah. Um, it's blatant. Mind-boggling. Yeah. This, the, I mean, even without that, this yeah. whole thing is mind-blogging. Yeah. They, that they send their armed thugs into your space, they, they exclude you, they go through all of your things, they take whatever the fuck they want. They, you know, the, 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 the potential for corruption, and always has been, yeah. with, with the drug it's war, is there. just incredible. Oh, and now it's way yeah. worse. I mean, they like, they like just entrenched it with the CSU. It's like, we're corrupt, we're going to fuck you over, steal from you, and, and, all their, and extort you. Yeah. And nothing you can but do. But you know what? We can. Unless you're the Sakuras. In which case, apparently there's something you can do about it. Sorry? You know? I said we paid it. We got it. Within weeks, we got our license. Wow. Mm. Stopped our wow. store. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. So, so you had. Yeah. You're about Sakura, the Doug and Michelle, they beat the CSU. Yeah, yeah just this week they won their case. Yeah, that's. that's and then I'm not sure exactly yeah. what the implications of that are yet. But you just got to hire Michelle now. <laughs> so, so, just to be clear, Legalization happens. You had to shut down all, what did you say, 38 of your stores, something like that. You tried to keep a few going. Yeah, we shut down 33, um, we kept five open. Uh, you ended up getting costly. fined for some of that. So that, I mean, that was pretty costly by itself. Then there's a little delay and then you apply for a license. And 27 months, did you say? 29. 29? 20 to the, 29 to, months to in between where you sure the store's been shut down. Yeah. You're paying rent. In yeah. fact, double the rent you were before. Yeah. And then you end up paying a fine. Yeah. And then you end up getting a license. This has been a very costly oh, venture for you. Absolutely. You haven't reached a payback yeah, yeah, point yeah. yet, have you? I would take home. No. I mean, you know, it's we have like 
We have ten percent of the volume that we had back in the day. Yeah, and it's going to be a while before you recover all the losses. Like there's a BC liquor store or a cannabis store, you know, just a couple couple of kilometers down the road. Right. Nice. So the difference with the BC cannabis store and with a store owned by someone they like yourself is that they are a government store. They're union workers. So union. what advantages do they have? They have what, a taxpayer paid rent perhaps? Well, yeah, they have like, it's... They don't pay rent. Yeah. It's yeah. their building. So they well, it's our pay. building, taxpayers' buildings. Right, but they don't... You know, the government is nothing but caretakers of our money and yeah. our things. Well, they, and so taxpayers' money is what's gone into putting this building together that yeah. they're operating in. So they don't have to And pay they rent. work at lower margins, like they don't have to, you know, make so when you're purchasing, So when you're purchasing from, from the BC We supply, have to charge more to make money. You know, they don't have to make money, they just have right. to sell it. Do they get their cannabis at a better rate than you do from the, from no, the conventional thing? They they're paying the same thing. They pay the same. But they have a huge advantage right off the bat. They don't have to have as much markup as their private store would have. Are, they, are there other things that are different for them? The, the way they're able to advertise or promote themselves or anything like that? Um, yeah. They advertise. They do. Yeah. So we just had a thing where originally they had said that everybody has to block off. They're allowed religion. to have, I think we're allowed to have more stores now. I think they did just change that. but it's um, well, they were, they were going for 50 stores, eh, across BC. Wow, and every, got, an individual person is limited to eight. eight? Yeah. So, yeah, they plant them, like we have a store in Seashelt. And did you say there's one close to here? Uh, yeah, just down there. So, you've had this location yeah. established for a long time. Yeah. And then with the advantages they have, they move into your neighborhood. Yeah. And now your sales are 10% of what they were before. And there's other stores well, around you. Before legalization. Too. Before legalization. Okay. Um, there's other stores around you as well. Oh, th this is like the Green Mile almost. Like it, there's a lot of dispensaries. In Mission, we have two private stores, one BC store. Okay. So it can be a. a so that's a, you know, that's a really, that pisses me off. That's okay. one of the, you know. And you have minimum prices that you can charge. You're allowed to. Mark it up. Well, we can't. You want. We can't sell less than what we paid for it. Right. I imagine that'd be the same for them as well. Yeah. Um, we don't lose and and now I'm not worrying too much more about that particular. And we can charge whatever we want. If we think this is worth a hundred dollars for three point five gram, here. Good luck. Right. Good luck selling it. You want to pay for it? Yeah. Right. Right, there's just a minimum that you can pay, and Trudeau's taking his dollar a gram right off the top of everything to begin with, and then there's uh, provincial that's taxes. That's thing, yeah, that's, the, the tax thing is... Uh, yeah, we think, I rail against that all the time. Well, one thing I did get to learn when I went to the Lyft conference was of all the store owners like yourselves were complaining about the excess of tax they're paying. Mm -hmm. and there has to be some kind of a tax break for the stores, because what's being held yeah. right yeah. now is the store owners are yeah. doing a bunch of everybody. They're getting tax, 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 and at the yeah. end of the day, they're charging a tax and they're creating yeah. pennies. It's yeah. making it so hard for these store owners to stay alive, and there shouldn't be a tax break for store owners. Yeah. And this has to be lobbied against. I heard this. This was a very big mm -hmm. voice over the last like ten days when I went, went to a couple of these conferences. Was the amount of store owners that are complaining? We're talking like there's like 3,700 stores alone in Ontario. You know, mm -hmm. there's 7,900 stores in Canada. Well, and they were promised a review a uh, long time ago, yeah, 13 months. Yeah. And that review yeah. has yeah. not and happened, 13 yeah. months to in arrears. And this is a huge Well, thing. it's not just that either. Oh, it's, I mean, uh, businesses like, your business is discriminated against in large ways when you compare it to other businesses. You know, be it they're just selling produce or even if they're selling drugs and things like that. Yeah. Um, what fees are you paying now in the city of Vancouver to be a weed store? Um, our city license now, I think, is about 13000 I heard they lowered it by It's 5000 I'm oh. getting the signal that 5, I'm making about 5000 Well, what's the liquor license? 2000 But it was 33000 when we yeah. first signed up, yeah. and then it went to... Uh, I know that, I know that a, a small pharmacy is about $300. Three hundred dollars. Yeah, wow. yeah. That's, that's yeah no, it's way. Uh, I didn't have no idea. Thank you for informing me. And the other things that are taxed, or, or where the the, uh, the city fees, uh, business fees are are high, are the uh, massage parlors, because that's seen as a, a sin of some sort. So right. Yes, yeah, so we don't want to put that down. Um, the other ones are the casinos. They pay quite a high 
uh, licensing fee as well. But we're not getting close. Nothing they close to thirty thousand. I mean, they got pubs in there. They got you know, like a lot going on in a casino, right? Like compared to a little pot shop. Yeah, the P and E also crazy. was a huge bill, but that was a, 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 a three week, and that was, that was, that was only like five hundred businesses all combined. Yeah, it was together. only like ten thousand dollars or something. Like that. Yeah. No, it was just outrageous. It was obviously, uh, you know, it's like that six point five million dollar fine to Ted. You know, that's just this. This is this is them saying, "Don't you dare." ever think you can open a, a medical dispensary here. You know, we have this much power, right? That, that's what it's all about. Just outrageous. Yeah. So, uh, well, they 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 show, they they have such power and they don't realize how powerful we truly are. And what they talk about that is, is we look at how we are in the world as in an industry. Yeah. We're in every religion. Yeah. We're in every country. Yeah. We're in every race. We're in every age group. We are the most powerful ecosystem in the world. Yeah. And when you guys are, when you start taking a look at it, no matter what race you are, what language you speak, or what age you are, you have endocannabinoids, and you know someone who's using cannabis, and can where you are in this planet. Yeah, pretty we much. We're the largest ecosystem in the world. We start really identifying the power we have, the lobbyist groups. We pay so much tax to these governments. If we all stop paying tax for one day across the country, you know how much that would hurt them. Well, There's ways, I know, but you can't do it. But I mean, at the same yeah. time, the, the, the ecosystem, <laughs> I know, yeah. But that'd be, we, we full stuff like that. We imagine you being able to create a lobbyist group be across the way in one day, no tax paid in all these towns. The fact that we are now in 2023. Come on. That legalization has resulted in, in little more than Prohibition 2.0 with the governments becoming the cartels. It's five years in right now. Despite, so shift. despite the fact that cannabis has proven to be medicine on so many levels with the endocannabinoid system. Despite the fact that it should be the number one harm reduction outlet for people addicted to drugs, despite all of yes, that, agree, what we're finding problems. out by all of this is that this powerful group that you say and I agree that we are, are dwarfed by how powerful the financial elite are on this planet and how much power they have through our so-called public servants in their ability to control us. Uh, we learned it, uh, you know, when the truckers went to Ottawa, but we really are learning it. You know, with, with how, with, you know, you guys know me, you know what, we've, you've followed my journey here. But I've well, not made it easy for them not to say yes to us with what we're doing. I've, I've made it impossible for them to say no. You know, we've got lawyers, harm reduction people, doctors, mm -hmm. professors, um, everybody, uh, the municipality, everybody supports what we're doing. We've demonstrated, these are just demonstrations. Right now, my, my staff is at, in the RV a block away or three quarters of a block away from a police station and right by the courthouse, mm -hmm. putting on a demonstration mm -hmm. by breaking the law and defying the Cannabis Act and providing what they say we can't su supply the way that we are supplying it to prove that this is not harmful, this is beneficial. And we've been doing it for six and a half years with hundreds and hundreds of people. We've now got letters about the yin yang from these people who are supporting us and, and wanting to testify on our behalf. And so many people will tell you that cannabis saved their life. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're probably, probably sitting in a room full of people feeling, I mean, you know, the same thing. Exactly. Cannabis saved my life. Yeah, right. man. That's why I speak the voice. Mm -hmm. That's why I am where I sit. So that's just the how community this is that we're doing. This community yeah. was the major part. Cannabis gave me a path. The community mm -hmm. saved my life. Yeah, for the sure. The ecosystem, the people I've The change with, in path. You, the change, the support. Yeah. And what we got right now is we have a different ecosystem that we're looking at. So it's really, it's, 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 it's the community is so strong in understanding where we are as a community. And Michelle and Doug just say somebody with, can, with cannabis uh, just got to... Well, I can, 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 cancer is yeah. in remission yeah. with somebody that they've been we, helping. We've we yeah. got some mm -hmm. amazing again. things going on with Cheryl Rose again with, with and, and Haley. I'm mm -hmm. um, looking at, I mean, my friends are looking at just how things are helping with the nutritional factors and we're proving that right now. Like, there's so many Your case, just, her case, so many profound there's, cases, each and every one on their own should probably have been enough to end the criminal prohibitions against cannabis. But like I say, we are up some, again, it's some really, really corrupt and powerful forces. Yeah. Well, it's um, not and that's just force. so it's evident. It's, 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 it's a system set. So it's in what you look at it, and that's just as laws in the United Nations. And as those laws are changing, and legalization is happening around the world, we're seeing it. Yeah, but is it it's, this kind of legalization? Is well, it, it's, we've it's been given in the states where it's all they're about taxing, fees? Yeah, taxing THC. Yeah. That's what's happened. 
But what right. they gave me the benefit right now is they say, okay, we well, can go for a plant. So that's bullshit. So when I started growing microbeads, I need 5,000 seeds a week for my nutritional, for my thing. Those are the laws we're after. They shouldn't have a seed limit, period. Right. For sure. They should have it legal and we should have yeah. be able to grow what we want. Yeah, man. This that's is the a... legal system. And if you choose to do what you, right? Now, we're not saying we're, not, we're growing it, we're uh, nutrition. Can, there's so many different ways this plant has to our ecosystem. But you can get, a, you can get a, uh, an exemption uh, through your doctor, maybe, from Health Canada to be able to supply your needs beyond the four plants. That's supposedly the case. Mm -hmm. In Glenn's case, what is it, 100 grams a day? That he's been able to use. He has scoliosis and numerous other PTSD and, and you know, a serious needer. Or someone is in serious need of cannabis. Years, years. And, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah, so yeah, after yeah. five years now yeah. of him yeah. fighting to get his license renewed, mm -hmm. but they haven't done for five years because they've been delaying, delaying, five even writing years. letters. They just denied him. Told him he could reapply at a lower amount if he wants to try again. But they've denied him. Uh, I was at the MER and then the ACMPR. Yeah. yeah. It's insane. I'm but it's not, it's way more than the same. Yeah. It's corrupt. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a logic free zone because all, when you're so saying it should be, it should so be, it so should be, of course looking, it should be. We're looking at, at the situation, right? So we're looking at a situation right now, and I always say 20%, probably 80% solution. So right now they're denying his license after five years. Yeah, well, they say I can reply to what they've said. So I can so still now continue the process. Yeah, 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 from no, doctor no, saying, no, this yeah. is what we're taking. Oh, they, they're replying to my lawyer, Jack Lloyd. Okay, so Jack Boyd's involved with some other stuff that we're working on, so he's going to get some information and that's yeah. going to be able to support well, the case. He seems to have been, I, I love Jack, awesome. and, 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 so and that's no, awesome. no, no slight that, on him at all, but in this case, he that. seems to have been defeated. You know, well, this with, is what we're doing. With, you know. We're using the lawyers to attack the laws, creating lobbies, and yeah. making change. Yeah, we'll be there in October as well. Oh, that's Perfect. very, very expensive. Yeah. We never talked about legal fees. You got legal fees going on in all this? That probably cost in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Can you imagine? I'm just trying to. <laughs> just yeah, trying to. You don't even want to get into those numbers. <laughs> like, you you may, never, talk about you may that. never break even in your little There's venture here. There's no such thing here. as breaking even. You as know, well. get all your money back that you've had. Honestly, the the it, fines yes. and the legal fees and oh my God, rent forever for nothing. And, oh my God. Like, it's, holy it's, shit. It's a family business. It's four generational state right now, so... And it's still I huge, mean, it's still a big empire and a big stuff, old. but it's just going to take you a while to make your money back. <laughs> you know? Yeah, probably never, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've probably written off so much. I mean, what did activism cost you? I'm not asking you for a figure. But, you know, over the, all those Cost's years nice of putting on... Uh, no, I'm talking about the money that you put into activism. When you, when you guys are funding... 420 and Cannabis Day and the Global Marijuana I'm going to see millions. I mean, over all of those years, millions. all of those events, you guys must have put a lot of money out right. just to try to help us help you by getting the laws changed. Millions. There's so many costs that you guys have had and a lot of money. And activists as well, like to just... Yeah. Know. If this was any other <clears throat> industry, you guys would be moguls. You know, you would, you would be like those multi-millionaire so fucking CEOs and shit. You know, um, this this industry has been stifled since the beginning for nothing. For well, to protect its corruption, it, it, it's not it's not negligence, it's not ignorance, um, it's not stupidity. It's calculated. It's corrupt as can be. They have been feasting on the cannabis community to protect their interests, to, to gain whatever for their businesses that are prohibition or, oriented, all that stuff. We have, this is terrible, what's going on here. It's just, and now talking to you and really thinking about these things, they're even more Well, you know, so, there were you know? a lot of like disruptors that came into our community, right? And kind of like broke everything apart, right? Broke our culture apart. Yeah. You know, like there's still community, right? Because you know, we've known each other for so long. It's like a family, right? We're all families. Yeah, it's a family, together. but Not but the whole way. kind of culture, you know, where we're, you know, we're just kind of getting back into that now, I think, right? And, you know, I the, hope the we are. Right. And, um, yeah. in Birkin is the glass happen. gathering is going to be weird, I think. It's a new place, too. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. I think it's, it's going to be a fantastic great. event. But, with my, faces but it's fine just to see people, right? Yeah. Redbeard, I, I love the guy so yeah. much. You know, we, we've had right. lots of st stuff together. I've helped him on his, uh, his glass gatherings and many other things. And he's got such a big heart and a good heart. 
and uh, but it's been uncomfortable uh, talking to him you know, over the last little while. He was at the because he's a licensed grower. Because he's a licensed oh, grower, that's, that's and the things that you know I've so had to say about these things. I'm so proud of him. I you know, want. I need him on the show. His ass off. Like, what do you come for? Of course, and I, and I, you know, and I always said we need good people on the inside too. But oh my God, right? For me to support that, I mentioned that off the top. I mean, I, I'm having a really hard time supporting anything to do with this well, legalization. What's, what's, okay, because, well, I support legalization. because they will allow no barrier access, because they're allowing these people to die horrible deaths on the downtown east. And not just, like we said, 86% of the people are dying. Nice, normal people, you know, not even people you can hate because they don't have clothes or money who shouldn't be hated anyway. But, you know, they're, they're killed. these people are dying, and I'm seeing it. I've well, lost so many people I know. Well, but the legal stores sort of represent that to me. It's like the government is not allowing the low barrier access. And they've said it. Health Canada said it to me in, in, in so many words that, you know, if they allow us to well, do what I, we're doing, then that issue. means that's other people whole... will do, want to do it across Canada. And that's going to hurt the bottom line of their legal system. That the, the, the stores, mean, you're, not, you're already not making as much money no as you should. No denying the drug war rages. You know, it's well, just that, uh, you know, from my so personal point of view, no um, this legalization is, 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 re is restricting. It's not even not allowing. It is putting a huge barrier in front of the people that would otherwise use cannabis to get off of those hard drugs and not die. Okay, well, and so, yeah. you know, we need to... We need to have more access. I mean, you need to keep doing what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And Redbeard needs to keep doing what he's doing. And, and eventually it'll all work out. And I'm, I'm working towards a bridge and a, and a community that is, is united, legal and illegal. But, and, and not the, actually, I hate the word illegal, yeah. regulated and unregulated or whatever you yeah. want to call it. I'm working for that. That's got to be the future somewhere. Okay. Okay. But it's not us, it too, you know? it's not us on this side that yeah. has to move. You know, in this negotiation, it's right all, now, we we've, been we've been offered a deal. We've been offered a deal that is absolutely it's, unacceptable, yeah. and we're not moving towards absolutely. it. We have to stand pat. We have to say no. The, the cannabis needs to be free for those people that are in trouble in their life and they can't afford it. The government, us people, yeah. government taxpayers, absolutely. we taxpayers need to, to pay situation. for whatever the minor little minuscule cost it is for them people who really need it to get cannabis. We're already paying for them to get toxic pharmaceuticals at enormous prices to the pharmaceutical companies. We need to make it so that we as a society pay for those people who can't afford it. It is free. And for the rest of us, for the rest of us, it needs to be the price that it should be, whatever that should be. So the marketplace needs to be open, not just low barrier on the, on the consumer side, but low barrier on the producer side. So that you can produce cannabis any way you want. I know that one of the places where, where you've been producing cannabis used to be, what was it, cabbage or lettuce or yeah, yeah, something lettuce. like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So whoever owned that property and ran that farm before paid their, fa their, their mortgage and fed their family on whatever it is they got on a head of lettuce. Yeah, well, they sold like uh, 250 I get it. Thousand heads of lettuce. I'll on. bet you you've got more buds than that being produced in that same space. I don't know. I'll bet you you do. I don't and every, know. Well, not you personally, but I mean a person that would do that. If right. you were to occupy right. that same That's space, a yeah. yeah, I get. You know, I, I was just talking figuratively because the, the the amount that you can produce in the way of, of valuable buds in a, in a cubic meter compared to what you can produce in the way of lettuce or cabbage or whatever in that same cubic meter is not even comparable. Yeah. Not even comparable. So, the point that I'm making is, is that it needs to be reasonable for the rest of us. I'm not going to stand yeah. for a government that's so corrupt that it won't allow for farmers to produce a product yeah. and bring it to market at what they think is a fair price. Farmers market. And, and that should be that for that. Absolutely. Be it farmers market, be it whatever it is. Farmers grow whatever they grow. They get pennies on the pound and they do quite well with it because they grow to scale. And cannabis should be no different. Now, on the other side of that, yeah, I have to put it in here because this is the whole picture. The whole picture is those that can't afford it and need to get it for free. The rest of us, all of us, get it at reasonable prices, whatever that means for a farmer that wants to bring it to market. You could, yeah. And some are going to grow it outdoors for the same price as they grow apples and tomatoes sure. and cure it in the sunshine sure. and bring it to market at similar prices so, so if the marketplace is yeah. open. Yeah. But just a sec, on the other side of that, also... For those people that want to produce cannabis in very connoisseur ways, with the very best of equipment, indoors where everything is controlled, where they're paying high dollars for people to clip that, when they're going through all kinds of stuff to cure it, when they deserve to be paid very, very well for all of their expertise, 
and they want to have boutique stores where the rich people can go and they can pay $100 a gram, that's fine too. The marketplace needs to contain those three things. For, and I don't care about the other. I'm not going to fight for the rich people. If they don't get that, okay, okay. But the poor people and the rest of us, we need to have cannabis without government interference to the point where a farmer can, can produce it without having to go through a whole bunch of hoops and regulations and restrictions and fees and denials, of course, because if, if, if a farmer could grow cannabis, they would grow cannabis. Yeah. Every farmer growing, no matter what there is out there, yeah. would grow cannabis instead with the market values being what they are yeah. until they shifted back. So the government interference is the only thing that's causing the inequities and the unreasonableness Absolutely. about access yep. And, and the laws. that's the fight. Yeah. Well, the, the laws that's are the government interference. That's how they're interfering. They put together this Cannabis Act yeah. with a whole bunch of different barriers and restrictions and criminal penalties yeah. and all the rest of it. And that is their interference in the whole deal. There's not a Tomato Act. You don't, you don't hear about a Coffee Bean Act. There's, there's, there's going to be a Mushroom Act, I'll bet you, oh, yeah. coming up. You know? Fun guy. Fun guy. They're not very fun guys at all. They're going to they're gonna decide that the, those... Those wonderful presents of nature that are d delivered to you in your backyard are something that you're going to be a criminal for if you didn't get it from a pharmaceutical company who yeah. chopped it up and put it into a capsule and right got a DIN number on it or something like four that. Four plants in ten. I just did four plants in a light space grow system with an LED light upstairs and a wick system. I went away for three weeks. I completely popped out of it. It's I cured wow. it in a cardboard box to show what you all can do at home. Wow. One hundred percent. Wow. This is what we can do. Yeah, that should be written down and copied. If your landlord lets you. You know what? You're going to fucking tell him. <laughs> yeah, it's about four plants in a small little thing in a yeah. wet system with a closed door with an LED light. We're not talking and about HPS and metal The thing that anymore. really intrigued me about the that, John. I will show you guys what, all what this. What intrigued me the most thing. about that, what you just said, was that you went away for three weeks. Yes. Because that's the thing is people are tied to their gardens. You're not right? tied to it with a wow. light. It's a wick system. That's I poured 10 gallons of water. I did this on film. I went away to Barcelona. I went on my trip there, I went away for nine days, came back, and they were 100% fine. I didn't even have to water them for another wow. six days. So, so you want to know anything is, about growing. And nothing about growing. <laughs> and this was an organic, so here's what I did, the simplest thing you could ever do possible. I went and bought some uh, Gaia Green Organic Living Soils, about four bags. I put it into Life Space System, 220 bucks. The soil cost me another 150. I don't use this. I use the soil for the rest of my life. Best thing. Wow. I got some fish amino acids, a little jar of it. It lasts me for 10 years. Cost me next to nothing. The friend made it. You can make this with fish heads and... and and and, a lot, and and you use like uh, brown sugar, you let it sit so you can make your certain biology. I put four plants into it, zipped it up with a nice little LED light, a fan. Wow, there's, there's a limit to how big they can grow in there, of course. Of course, you yeah. only, you only grow, you're, you're growing for yourself. It's all about growing your own medicine. Well, but four plants is not enough, and what you're talking about oh, is yeah, great, yeah. it's still hey. not enough. But it is great. Depending yeah. on what you're consuming. I well, have so many people consuming. consuming with four plants. 100%. Four plants could last me if I really truly needed it. And I consume more than a lot of people. I see. Right? I know how to grow four plants. Yeah, you know how to grow them. Right? So you can yeah. grow four plants in four on, on a completely different note, sort of, how did that work out with the plants you were growing in the shade? Did they actually produce pretty well at the end? Well, when I did, well, the ones I did underneath the different underneath trees. the different trees and stuff. Oh, that's a whole other thing. So seeing the different <laughs> developments <laughs> under different trees and different patterns of leaf patterns, that's really what came down to writing the book, understanding the keys to their own future LEDs was seeing the different patterns of plant, the same strain, many kush, everybody knows, grown out under pear, plum, grape, cherry, mulberry. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, all different. I knew they were growing under trees and not getting much sun. All different trees, and they grew all different. This was all documented. I see. And, the, and, and actually, the grape was all far away. You could see them elongate, get huge leaves and, and gigantic stems. So I saw the difference in leaf patterns. Right. And how plants would react to different sun. In, in environments where there's other plants present. So where other plants were present at the same right. time, they were always in pause. But for me, I was paying attention to what was going on with the light recipe. Right. And, and so the, the one with the least the, the amount of shade. The, the buds that, at the end were. The, the one with the most amount of shade got the biggest leaf. And that just right. took like more energy. <laughs> what about grafting? Right. Because it's all and the one that was directly in the sun was a far red. Right. It goes three feet into the ground, so we know where far red works and how far red works. So as you can add the different lights, you saw different structure of right. the plants, adapting to the in and old spacing, stuff right. like this. Did you um, go more than one generation in, in that same environment? Just, you, one, you, just my one. Because you could do that as well, right? You could, of you, course, you, you can. Create, just me 
playing, geeking out with like you know. And Carol, you were going to say something about grafting in that situation? Yeah, I was wondering about grafting onto a fruit tree. We have I, some I, you know what? Fruit combo. That's interesting. We can do we so have much with this plant. Trees. We're scratching the surface, and that's where we are with this plant. Now. We'll I think you can graft. We can do so much with it. You can all. I can pull one plant. I can make it the size of this room. It's you can you can trellis you can keep oh, it. Oh yeah, because you have trees. They give you a they give you a height restriction, big deal. Cut the top off. Done this uh, a super crop, tied them down, created a tree that was the size. Yeah, thankfully, of the they car. didn't do that. They were thinking that was this that. tall. People say you couldn't do it. You see some of yeah. the videos. It's almost this big, one plant. And I'll tell you, they give us the ability to grow four plants very begrudgingly. Yeah. You know, the, the, yeah. the government has fought hard there's to no not plant, allow there's that. No, there's no storage amount. You go, you can have a thousand pounds in your house, and you can have ten. You can have. Uh, you can have a, a garage full of liquor. I can have a garage full of weed. Yeah. There's no limit. Yeah. You can have as much weed as you want. Yeah. So we have some good laws. So we well, did. That that one in particular. Oh, yeah. we can also smoke it legally <laughs> down the street. I'm not interested in the good it. laws. I'm interested I, in the not good laws. Well, we got to look at the, some of the laws that we are changing. And once that, oh, that, sure. Yeah, we come a long way. How many percent we come a long way? We can't settle here. That's the thing. This can't be the model. And they want it to be this, the model. They want this, it bad this, to be the this, model. This is the starting of a model that's changing. The five-year change that we're at right now is very much talked about the next shift in this industry. You've got to look at what's happening in California and in Colorado and in those jurisdictions in the States. There you go. Um, and, and, and just how much prohibition is still in, in, in play there and how the licensing and the fees rule the day. I mean, and, and it's favoritism. It's There's so many aspects that aren't right yet and, and that's what we don't want and that's what they're trying to now bring to the rest of the world because the governments look at that and go well hey we make our money like the Trudeau cartel they don't lose you hear about all these different places losing money all these big you know cannabis companies losing money that's not the government this is those companies and it's not and it's not the owners of the, of the companies it's the stockholders of but it's also companies. small businesses you just can't Sure, there's a lot of that going on too, but the government's not hurting. Over 75% this is, these, these are all... So, so what you're getting at right now, and what's just happened, I just read the book of inflation. Like, I'm like, up now at the end of it. And, and we're exactly where we were in the 70s. We're exactly where we were with inflation. It almost hit, what, the prices went up almost like 62%, 38%, 40%. And they start reviewing what's going on right so now. So we are sitting right enough. now, we're at 38% inflation rate. You can see straight across the board, that's going to climb again. Yeah. So as we're seeing inflation rates go up, we're going to see you guys start looking at food, shelter, and health care. So that's really what we're paying attention to. So it's not like I'm trying to hear bad news, but we're coming upon times where we're getting into where inflation is going to start. We're going to keep printing money, and that isn't really going yeah. to the goal in that sense, yeah. that's right. So it's they're devaluing currency, and a dollar in 2020 and 2010. Today's worth a dollar sixty. It was a buck sixty-two. That's how much you can value. Right. I posted it today on my Instagram. My, my point on it all is that governments find this attractive. That to, to legalize in this fashion, where, where they get their money it's off the top. It's very anti-small business. Um, what they're doing. And, and Seventy-five percent of the small businesses that are in the market right now are going to fail this year. And not just you know, small businesses. You know how many stores have closed down across Canada since legalization? All the head shops, all the mom and pops are gone. So as in being our maintainer and going to all the stores we came to from Moss, mm -hmm. from Pops, from KDK, from Kelly, from all of these people, all of these wholesalers, all these mom and pop stores, all of these, it, they're, they're all gone. Yep. They've all disappeared. All the horticulture stores. All the horticulture yeah. stores. What's happened is what we got right now is we have cheap glass because you're not buying from your local glass yeah. store. They're buying cheap products because they warehouse them in garbage. Yeah, nobody's buying No one support yourself. So we use that. Nice right. We gotta start having fairness. We gotta start having events. We gotta start bringing community based in together. So when we start doing community based and you get the community involved, you're gonna have more of a community run. So if you go to a small town and you host a one day event, we bring a community and bring in your small glass, bring in another, we're gonna host it. We try and get things set up, but you can set up little community events now. This is where legalizations came to play, and you talked about this. They want more of an education behind it, but the legal end can't do it, but we can. We can create a community event. We can bring in the store owners and the LPs that come on down and create what we're talking about. And we can bring in, bring in, and we can try to start making grounds. You just gotta do it now. So do it in your community. Are you offered pipes by the government suppliers? No, not at all. Not at all? So no. you just have 
You can have yellow so stuff. So when I go to the other you know, put whatever the legal stores, they've got pipes available. They, they're buying them from whoever they want to buy them. Yeah. Them, whatever. That's it. So you got three main entities that put, that, put, and that sell the BC cannabis stores that put sell BC cannabis stores. I had to apply right. to the provinces to actually be able to sell to the legal stores and yeah. I got denied across everything. For maintainers? For maintainers, for toker pokers, and now, and now you got... I, I know what stores have the legal rights to sell, right? So you got... I'm not going to get the names right now, but whatever. Mm. There's certain entities that will sell directly to these stores. Now, the stores can have an option to, the private stores have an option, but the legal government stores do not. So, you also applied for a production license quite a while ago, and... Well, our team did, yeah. Right. And that looks like that's happening? You're... So, we, yeah, we're in full tilt with that one. Will it be Weed's brand? Uh, we can put a weeds brand out, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do that. But now to to do that, you still have to deliver your product, what, to packagers who package it and then to the province? Yeah, because we don't have that packaging license, but we could we just hook up with somebody who has and then they that. And then they would send it to the provincial warehouses and then no, you would actually, get it back we, from there or would you get it back from the packages? No, we can just do direct delivery. So that's good to hear. So that's, that, those are improvements. So you know, this middleman here in BC, which yeah. is good to hear because I've heard in other provinces that everything goes to a warehouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's right there. And then I met the guy. And they wanted that here originally too, right? These are changes. But you know what the right? catch is? Even though we're doing direct delivery, did we still got to give the LDD a 15% distribution fee. For not even touching it. For not even touching it. Wow. Wow. Well, I mean. <laughs> yeah. well, just to back up a little about. bit, when we were talking about when you're when you're buying this stuff from the what do you call it, LDB? Yeah. LDB. Um, yeah, which is like how much? Distribution I mean, when you bought Redbeard's uh, product to put into your store, yeah. Um, did you buy it sight unseen? Were you able to see some of it? Uh, well, or do you have to buy it, I, and if you want I to look at it, you have to open a package. I happened to go do a tour of Redbeard's garden. So maybe that example, Redbeard, because you went Red, to this place. Yeah. Typically speaking, typically I don't see it. You don't see and it, and I buy a case of twelve. That's the minimum you can buy. On a lot of things, yeah. yeah. It's and brutal. Then, so it's once scary. you get it, then you open it up. You have and to I buy it. one once I get a case. Before I put it into inventory and whatnot. Well, actually, I'd have to put it into inventory to buy it, but then I, I bring it up here into my office and I scope it. Right. And, Test it and see. And uh, have a look at it, right? And yeah, that's out of your pocket, right? That's out of my pocket, yeah. And, then, and you're not allowed to show people what it looks like in the store, basically. No, we are now. So I can. So what I do now. Um, Another good change. Well, now what I can do on Thursday is when we get our delivery, then anything new, then I buy it, and I'm standing there with my receipt in my hand, and I open up a package, and I can show everybody in the store what it looks like right there, and what I'm not with. And then sometimes I bring well, them... Well, you my... don't like new time? Yep. Nice. Yes, I do. I get a refund from the store if I see mold on it or something. So you, you had problems before where that wasn't the case as well. Is this another improvement? Yeah, it's getting better. I mean, and like I said, it's evolving, right? Like it's it's been shitty, and it's still shitty for a lot of people. Are you worried? But I think people are stepping up now because there's been several issues, like just from me, like yeah. with producers. Oh, I know yeah, you're awesome. Thank right, you. just with issues, 100%. right, with powdery mildew and stuff, right? That's not acceptable. Well, you got the microscope there and everything, and I want to acknowledge you for that. A lot of you store owners aren't doing exactly what the weeds are doing here. And if you haven't known, and you're going to know now, they scope and buy products. I've seen tens of thousands of dollars worth of products, and you guys have just basically just thrown away just so you know that what you're getting downstairs yeah, is legit. You've been doing that through your stores from day one. I want to acknowledge you for that, Carol, what weeds does. They go that extra mile. You don't get that with the like ICA, I say, I'm you know, so, user. I, and I, but people need to know that, and this yeah. is where the education comes into play. This is where people need to know exactly the roots of what's going on, what people are looking for, yeah. and how to properly address some yeah. of these subjects. And at the same time, like you said, you're getting product, you have no idea what it is. Obviously, and I'm hearing it's on not the other end, they want to be, they, they're, they're growing a million dollars worth of weed, they can't even test it, and then they put it up, people don't like it, they got two million dollars worth of weed in the garbage, so no one's being able to test it from right along the whole fucking line. Yeah. Do you get so is, approached by licensed producers to have their products? 
And do oh. they and do they provide well, you with samples at all to show you what their products might be like if you didn't buy them? Um, sometimes they bring in products that they bought at other dispensaries, and yeah. like this is what they have. Oh, and, I see. You know, um, but for, for the legal, we're not allowed to still get. For the legal non-government owners that you know are really suffering all these things, I think that the government there is not fairly putting on you. Are you organized at all? Is there a group that's speaking on behalf of all the different owners and saying, hey, this isn't right? How come, yeah, I think how there come are, kids can go well, into liquor mm -hmm. stores, but they can't come into cannabis stores? I mean, the like tax that. issue, you know, that's on all levels, right? Everybody is choking from that, you know. So, so that's, that's the main so big concern is to take off that tax burden. That, yeah, that's a huge, you know, lobbying. But there's a lot more that also isn't fair. Uh, you know, yeah. if you compare it to liquor, food, yeah, uh, no, it's a lot not you know, fair for sure. It's, it's a lot not fair. Yeah. So, uh, um, and I was just wondering if there was an organized group of all, you know, there is, there is, there's there a is. business association, independent cannabis. Yeah. What is it? Do you write letters or make phone calls or send emails or what? What are you Actually, doing? You know, well. when you're not happy about some of this stuff. Um. Well, I do make phone calls uh, to the LDB. We go back and forth with emails. Right. With you know you well, Interactions. Do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. Well, it depends, you know. It, like, uh, somebody told me that I should just be phoning Health Canada every day. Uh, With a lot you of know, interaction. I'm not sure you. that would get me the results I'm looking for. You know, they, they yeah. tune me out to, if you do that, or they just stop answering their phones. Or it's whatever. more like There's a normal right amount, right? interaction. You, when you're contacting them, you have a good reason to contact them. Yeah. And, and, you know, exactly, you're because the issue. we always want to problem solve between us and the LP first, right? right? And just try to figure stuff out. And then. Are they giving you, uh, you know, the, the uh, well, we're not the ones responsible for these restrictions yeah. and, and stuff like that as well? It's, they push it on up the chain a little bit. And say, well, these are the regulations that were imposed on us by the province or by the federal government. Not really so much like that. It's more budgetary issues that I come see. up, right? right. So, I guess for a business, that is the bottom line. Yeah, like I say, it's, uh, it's choking, you know, like I say, 75% of the businesses are likely to fail this year. And you're not talking just cannabis businesses, you're talking about business spirit, right? Or are you well, talking I'm cannabis? talking just in the industry. Oh, in the cannabis Between industry. The producers, retailers, whatnot. So seventy-five percent of the businesses currently operating. That's not me that saying small that. Ones. I think it was eighty percent. I heard, but I, you know, I don't you won't know. Make it through the next fiscal year. It's a projection, year. right? Who knows? Well, we'll see but how. But it's hard. But it's a hard business, like you say. You know, obviously, we're not in it for the money because we're just sinking. You know. So when these businesses go under. Right? Uh, if there's something but, yeah. something to be had there, then the big boys come in and scoop it up, eh? Well, it sounds yeah. like the government's uh, yeah. allowing you guys to play around for whatever. Eventually, those government stores are just two kilometers up well, the road. Well, if they set up your because they can sell it at a lower markup price. It's like apples and oranges we're selling. Like, I sell good weed. Yeah. And it's really curated. And, they and they're just, yeah, they're putting on tweed and kind of like, well, you know, uh, blah, 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 all this shit that you don't want to have yeah. into your lungs. Are they able to sell it cheaper because it's not as they quality? Do. They do. They do. Because and what you're choosing is a little that's higher. The attraction is they got cheap, cheap products, cheaper yeah. products. But they all know what cheap in the means. long run, you know, like we talk about all the friends that we lost in the last few years, you know, and you think, how did, how did that plot, plot well, you know, play a role in that situation yeah. for that yeah. person? Maybe if they had to take a better care of their life. I don't know. Yeah. I, I started smoking cigarettes when I was nine years old, so I, started, I don't know. You were a year ahead of me. I started at 10. I started at 13 and quit at 37. Yeah. I'm going with what you were saying with these smaller businesses. What it looks like to me is that the government is fine with people putting all kinds of money and effort into setting up shit, buying equipment, having all this stuff that works. Yeah. And then because they can't turn a proper dollar, this stuff is now available to the to the big companies to come and swoop up and take yeah. over. Yeah. And and uh, boy, you guys, I think there's so much there that could be brought into court uh, with respect to how the government has handled legalization. Oh and, yeah. Uh, I know. You know I, there should involved. be a class action suit. There really should right. be. It should be, yeah. you know, on several different avenues as well. Uh, it's it's criminal hypocrisy on so many different levels. Well, yeah. I think say there should be one. So if you have to lead one, and that takes a full commitment of a passionate person that's going to commit to that fight. 
Yeah, but we have people like, well, like Jason Wilhelm, so you have to get that passion to connect. Well, we're back. We're in court against them in October, and, if and you allow that to happen. Um, Pat yeah. Warnke and, and uh, Jason Siemens uh, went through with their constitutional challenge Thank and you. won. Uh, we've got the Howell case in Alberta, which was profound in the past. Yeah. 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 I had Pat on the show just yeah, the other day. So we are getting very good rulings. Uh, these things are being done. But, you know, oh boy. Interesting. You know, for the, for the legal side of things, too, there's a lot. I mean, we're bringing Health Canada into court as a constitutional challenge or charter challenge on their um, negligence in providing us with the license and support to continue what we're doing. And uh, that's a different side from what the business side is, where all of these businesses have, you know, gotten into the whole legalization scheme because that's the right thing to do. Of course it is. You know, you want to try to do the right thing at such a large expense that's going to end up being probably money down the drain for them. That's a whole other lawsuit. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a whole bunch of these, uh, these sides of things. Yeah, I think medical users, you know, because of the problems they've had, like I said, this is not about the government not allowing something. This is about the government actively shutting down something, like actually putting barriers up. Um, if they if they don't allow for school, stores and storefronts to provide high dose edibles to people in the downtown east side, mm -hmm. then the people will sell them on the street, and so that's yeah. what's happening. And now they're in there shutting down the people that are selling them. We yeah. had Rosie setting up at Thornton Park there, a great access point, for, and, and people knew it, that she was there on these days and they could go get those. Uh, she helped hundreds of people, or at least dozens of people, you know, that were struggling with addiction as, a, as an access point, a low barrier access point. And they've used all sorts of force against her. She's now not able to do it because they got scooters. So they come in on the scooters now. Uh, she used to set herself up pretty much in the middle of the park. She had everything put away when they got to the table. You know, she didn't lose her stuff yeah, anyway. So. They forced yeah. her away, but she wouldn't lose all of her stuff. Now they just zoom in on these scooters, and they're right there before she can put shit away, and she loses her stuff. And they, they told her this, and she's going to lose all of her stuff, and they're going to keep doing it. The mayor just put out a letter, quite a long letter, um, that the police took with them to the art gallery, uh, is it two weeks ago Saturday? Um, stating that you know they're not going to put up with, they're not going to tolerate these pop-up cannabis uh, markets and events, and they're talking about cannabis day as well, and that they're they're going to actively now enforce this. There was 30 cops there to deal with seven vendors at the art gallery on that Saturday. Sorry guys, somebody's going to buzz at our door. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there they are. It's not Johnny B. It's time to do what you got to do. <laughs> what happens when you're not in a closed studio? Yeah. With security. Like we normally are. Yeah. We don't let our we don't let our guests go in the middle of the show. Uh, well, yeah. And speaking of middle, speaking of middle, we're not really in the middle. We're sort of, you know, getting the no, towards I think the end of most of what I wanted to ask you about. Over the world. Do you think so? Things, right? That's good. That wasn't that. Hard. Yeah, that wasn't that, that, hard. Hard. that wasn't that hard. You, you come on, oh, almost, you know. Well, what I didn't want to do, what, what I didn't want this to be, was a show, you know, where we promote. The legal system, because the have, legal system doesn't yeah. deserve to be promoted. No, I did want to provide. I did want to provide wow. you. Wow! Look what I'm wearing. I did want to provide you with the opportunity um, to promote yourself and what you're doing here, and to give us an insight into what's happening here, and, and to, to let to let us see what you can do, um, you know, within the system that you're working within. I think that uh, I'd like to go down into the store mm -hmm. and just have a look at the products that you have there and you can talk a little bit about how you know you choose which ones to have and put all that stuff together. Okay. And, uh, and so yeah, let's do that. You want to do that now? We're going on the road, Glenn. All right, hold on a minute. Get all that, that expensive equipment up on the <laughs> so you can't get it down the stairs. Right. All right. All right. So, uh... Of course, if I didn't ask you something that you wanted to cover, you know, feel free to. Okay, yeah, you know, yeah. Get it off. Okay, I'm following you guys. Alright, All right, so, uh. You're going to be doing? I'm going to come back. Hey, are you going to watch on the, the, the laptop there? Huh? Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> and no, the weed van will not be outside when we get out there. Do we get a Do we get a weather report? We don't have the <laughs> visit of the CSP. 
this week, oh, yeah. but we do have the weekly THC weather report. There you do. And that is, is that after quite a bit of sunshine and fairly warm weather, it's closed in a little bit. It's um, going to rain. It's supposed to be again like this again tomorrow. It did rain a little bit. They, they said there would be a little more than there was. Um, tomorrow, uh, there will be the uh, same thing as today, they said. And then we get like a whole week of rain. So leading up to uh, at least the 22nd of June, they're calling for rain. Yeah. This was in my backyard. This was in the backyard? Nice. Yeah. Nice. There we are. Weeds. And they range in price from six dollars. Did we do we put them on sale? So half for gram, like half gram for six dollars. But I see there's. Uh, yeah, you can get a one gram for eight dollars. Uh, and wasn't there three, three grammers? Yeah, you can get cases uh, as well. You can get like this one here. Like but basically, six dollars with with a with a typical regular you know what? discount. That's what we charge, like. Back in the day, five bucks, bucks a joint. No, six bucks, six six bucks a joint. Yeah. Nice pre roll. And if you bought 10 of them, it was 60 bucks. Well, nice pre roll. I mean, I don't want to don't want to pre here, but you have much more expensive ones, right? I smoke well, a lot of them. Come with some power to them and they, get they call them infused. They're not right. infused. So, infused joints, that, that, they can range in price. Wait a minute, like 50 bucks. I did not Yeah, know. right? Like this is one and a half grams for $24. These are delicious. They're wrapped in like a... Right? Uh, $18 for, for one joint of one gram. This is a banana kush and, yeah. and these other People flavors as well. Yeah, these are super popular. These ones here, the uh, box cut. Yeah, you're going to have those. Okay, yeah. But, but for just straight flour, it's basically five or six dollars a joint at the low end, and at the high end it would be. Well, you can get it for two dollars a joint if you're buying the right one. Of the point three. Yeah. Like that, up there is ten joints for two hundred dollars. Oh. Two dollars and ten cents. But the high end stuff is is that's where I was going. Stuff, it's not really that high. Um, With just flour. It's too high, but it's not really that high. Uh, I don't see anything. This one here, like thirteen seventy-five for one gram. For one gram joint. Thirteen dollars a gram. So that's probably your highest right there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Kind of thing. I mean, you know. And then this is the, uh, the weed itself. The thing is, I'm not looking at it's what, it's like how I've always done it. And it's what the market is. If I get it for this, I sell it for that. If I get it for, you know, it's great. Right. That's why you have different prices. For sure. Some people are just looking at that top dollar and they want that top dollar. Well, they're trying to get all their money down at once. They want all their money today. At once, yeah. yeah. You're on a longer longer term plan and when you might I break like even at all this. I want to be fair and just have this good relationship. Where you would love to have like, a low barrier uh, situation where you can have farmers bring it to you at I way low like places and you can put it out there. Like, for instance, this is skipping yeah, this cabinet here, but this one here is like... Today is Fat Sack Tuesday, so today that is sixty seven dollars and fifty cents. For one ounce. For one ounce. That's your low end weed, but still it's, it's, nice. it's still good weed. It's nice. I scope everything so or I least, know it's gonna be fine, right? At least so, that's what it's your whole thing. Everything's tried, trusted, yeah. true, right? See, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. See, nice. Um, we have, and we have good deals like all the time. So this is also just uh, like eights of weed yeah. in these packages? Yeah, these are all, yeah. So that, that, that was one of the silly things that they did in the market was they flooded it. Everybody's like, three and a half, that's the skew we want, right? Right. So, well, there's a lot of it. So, I'm still kind of weaning. Like, it's still like everything I, I would stand behind right now. Quite a difference, I think, between the packaging where it's in these uh, rip open containers and, and these other. <laughs> Somebody loves this. I lied to you. No, I think it's dropping out there, yeah. <laughs> and then these containers that uh, we always thought were quite ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, They're yeah. Uh, yeah, glass jar. Any 
any movement down the road do you think of having something where you can see the weed? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. That might, you know, that might still I change. Do, uh, there might not be any right now, but I do. Um, yeah, the spoke the weed I spoke, I put it in a jar so far. and light it up. Right. And then I might find it. Well, I, I know those and ones. So I show yeah. on Thursdays. When you say that now you're allowed to do that more. Yeah. It would be nice if you could have a catalog of pictures of showing what you had in the store. Yeah. Right? Do. Without having to smell it, they could look at it in a picture. We, we do have a picture catalog. Oh, do you? Cool. Yeah. All right. So you're allowed to do that. So this is, this is your higher end. Thank you. Well, this is bigger bags, right? This is all 3.5 grams. And then you would receive your ounces. Seven grams. And you can only sell one ounce to a person at a time per day? 30 grams. 30 grams. But you can go in and out. You can go in and out. Oh, well, I'm not sure. I don't think that's in the spirit of what they were trying to accomplish there, John. Which was to keep people from having a You're saying you could go to another city and hit a visit another store? Oh, no, I've gone into the store. I've been at a local... Let's say for trip, okay? Okay, here's the whole thing. So this was really good. So the BC government stores, I went in and I got my mats. I walked up and which I came back in and bought my mats again. They had no problem. Wow. wow. BC government store. Okay. Because they don't know if I'm medical or not, so they can't regulate me. I can carry 150 grams if I want, right? So they can't determine. So but it's after, you, they you they you regulate yourself? You reg regulate yourself. Oh, right. They do not no, regulate you. They told me that. Just so you know, that was the BC government store, and that was in Mount Lehman. Yes, I'll tell you guys. It was guys who, I love that. Because I go and check out the products, and I made that very clear. And they said, yeah, we don't regulate that. That's not, that's not their job. I see. But they can only give you at per sale. If you think you need, if you think you need more than that, then you want to go down the door five times. That's that's the way you can walk out. Be. So and that's how it should be, and, and and that's one one thing that made me smile. Right. So I just wanted to pass that on. Well, that's a good one. I like that. And so this is basically, I see there's some uh, quarter ounces up here, but primarily the bigger bags. These are ounces, and they range in price from seventy five to mm -hmm. two hundred. With most of it being around the one twenty something like that, probably around a lot of one twenty five something. Like that. And that all nations weed, I can tell you right now, it might be expensive, but it is killer. That's the yeah. most expensive one to make. It is some of the best weed. Though. Yeah. It is. It is like by far. It is just like, wow. So Everything all nations, they're a fantastic company to work with. And we have some strains that are just direct like delivery to as well. That's so not them. all it's stores get better. them, right. which is nice. So we do have kind of, you know. So that works out to $5 a gram over there. I don't think I see very much here that's over, that it is ten dollars a gram or more. Is that's that right? Seventy-five ounces. I don't. No. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah. the starting point. And yeah. It really doesn't go up to no. even ten dollars a gram for anything. Yeah, like this one so here, the one I have there at one twenty, it sells in some stores at one fifty. The two hundred dollars an ounce is pretty close to ten dollars a gram. Yeah, well, yeah, but it yeah. Isn't. no, but it's, still it's eighty bucks short. Yeah. Okay, wait yeah. a second. You know? In 1988, I was selling weed for 250 bucks an ounce. Yeah. Things <laughs> <laughs> really go bad. I mean, yeah, inflation's well, gone up, but weed yeah. has stayed with the market. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, but well, it but went I'm down. Not, it went down. I was buying. I've been being able to buy no, pounds for 800 bucks right now. The, the, the reason 14 that one doesn't. Fourteen grams for 65 bucks. 14 grams. The reason that one doesn't work, Johnny, is because the, the the price of cannabis was always based on prohibition and people going to jail and all that kind yeah. of stuff, and it never should have been $10 yeah. a gram. Um, so so when you talk about inflation on that, if we, if, we still had, if we still had full on uh, prohibition, mm -hmm. uh, where would the price of weed be? It would probably still be around $10 a gram. It probably wouldn't have gone up. But this is a whole different thing where we've got legalization here and that should have resulted in the ability for Carol to sell it a lot less than she is. If yeah. Trudeau wasn't taking his $448 right off the top of every pound that's sold, um, you know, she wouldn't have to pass that on to the consumer and the provincial tax and the municipal tax and the packaging fees and all of these other things that are building that price to where it is shouldn't yeah. be there if this was proper legalization. It's a typical ground that we're surrounded by so many different kinds of weed. Come on, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? Well, We've and come a long way, but no, it's not awesome because of the, the, the things that aren't awesome about it. It's great that there's weed stores. It's great that you can go and buy weed and you can have weed and you're not going to get arrested for weed. But it's not great that you can't come in and look at the weed and smell the weed. It's not great that you, you can't come in and get weed that some farmer decided to bring here at $20 a pound. 
we got gummy carrots, we got chocolate, we got we drinks, there. we got we got deodorant bars, topicals. Shit. Johnny came and took over the show. Look at me, I'm just happy. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just being on the positive. I, 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 I love this I part about it. I started over there, I I'm working all the way over here, and I'm going to give you a right now. So that's all I got. Really check this out. <laughs> okay. He's right, enough with the flour. You do have edibles. Yeah. Although you're picky about what edibles you have. I, I think edibles are, you know, everybody. we're in East Van, right? Everybody's got yeah. their edibles covered. Like, and they're not so because the cannabis substitution program is flooding the neighborhood with <laughs> 12,000 milligrams of edibles every day, you don't need to sell those here. I don't think so. I like that. I mean, we and sell five times more edibles in Seashell where they don't have, you know, a lot of bakers there yeah. doing their thing, right? That's because they used to go to Doug and Michelle for their edibles and now they can't get them anymore. So. That's, that's but yes. you're not you're not big on the edibles. That's your least of the gain of the cabinets that you have. Uh, yeah. You're not thrilled with the 10 milligram. Uh, I'm not into I'm sure. like the highly processed foods, right. you know, which you need to bring in to to have your shelf stable or whatever. So you this know, is even though you can't see it. This is primarily all, gummies, gummies and chocolate and chocolate. And chocolate. And they're good. They taste good. Uh, people like them. They serve a purpose. Uh, right. They're good for. People who just want low dose, which there Nobody's are. Nobody's coming of, in and saying, "Oh my God, that gummy I ate it when I got here, it just knocked." There are out. people that do that. They <laughs> ask, still do that. Yeah, there's people that ask for the two milligram per. Um, yeah, they got a low tolerance. A very low tolerance. Or they're eating several chocolate bars or gummies. No, they're, just, <laughs> they're, just, they're just. Some people do have low tolerance. Yeah. I talked about that on the show that you know the government can't regulate your dose because it's so different for so many people. Yeah, there needs to be that range. The idea people in serious medical. Yeah. Uh, shape or bad shape in wheelchairs, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of them mm -hmm. to, at the Van Du experience, and all they needed was one of those five milligram balls every 20 minutes. They'd right. take one of those, and every that's the thing they wanted. Well. You know? So, so, so um, the next cabinet is the concentrates. Yeah, well, so you have CBD yeah. oil and THC oil, and most of this is they call it uh, ingestible extracts. Ingestible extracts, and, and it allows you to have a lot more in your package than. Right. Gummy, right? You're not limited to the 10 milligrams that right. you are in the edibles because yeah. these are ingestible yeah. things. Yeah. Um, you can have like 50 milligram. So when that says 50 milligrams, what are they referring to? Is that one cap? Uh, which one are you? I think it is because I can see it's 25. Oh, right there, 2,500. So yeah. those are 50 milligram caps that you have. No milliliter. Milliliter. Not milligram. No, that's, milliliter. Yeah, that's the amount uh, in the bottle. Oh, I see. And then each capsule is. We got some new ones coming up. It'll be 750 milligrams. It'll be 25 milligrams. You'd have to read the box. I didn't do math. They were going to be putting in a price structure what they were talking about when I was here. So mm -hmm. they should be putting some bad on the pricing structure. I never liked their pricing structures. What about shatters and stuff? No shatters here? down here. I see that. Huh? So um, we keep all our question. shatters and such and uh, oh, okay. resins and rosins and such in what there. What does a gram of shatter cost? Uh, 35 bucks maybe. Yeah. Resin is, or uh, shatter is kind of on the low end of... Is it? It's not Captain Potency. 35? Like no. 32. It's not Captain Potency, but... But... Well, that's I'll, leave, I'll, leave, I'll leave <laughs> just leave it there. <laughs> Sometimes there's a lot of like, uh, you know, added terp added terpenes, yeah. Yeah. added terpenes to add the flavor. Here we have uh, honey oil, which is I guess the closest thing you would have to the, uh, yeah, we got the a tears, couple. the full extract cannabis oil. Mm -hmm. $42. And if it's anything like the uh, honey oil of the past, is it? Like this one here, I mean, it's, it's in um, hemp oil. Or some kind of like a nice carrier oil, right? So let's take that too. Mm -hmm. But this is, yeah, this is a, like a... Is that a syringe that's in that tube? Yeah, I call them dispensers. Okay. It's, it's, an oral dispenser, yeah. yeah. Oil one dispenser. beef I always had about honey oil back in the day was how messy it was always, eh? Yeah, no, this is easy so, uh, and you can, <coughs> you can dab that or you can put it under your tongue or you can put it in your Spread paper. it on a paper. And then yeah, you spread it on your paper. It? So those are the same kind of thing. Same kind of thing. It's uh. Here, you have a shot in here. This is the honey oil. What she's talking about in the tube there. Yeah. Uh, and these are what? It's, it's a dispenser type. Yeah, it's the same kind of different. Box hot. Box hot. Yeah. Funny. So 
the way Bot Box did. Yeah. Exactly. The same. And then there's yeah. these are all like gel caps and whatnot, which you know you can get them pretty high dose. Yeah. The uh, THC symbol's always been one of my beefs about this. I know. I wish I, I made one that was a heart. <laughs> but they, I'm not allowed to put them on there. We stole it and, uh, and did what should have been done with it. We, yeah. then we put fentanyl in behind there, and the THC stopped fentanyl overdoses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. And then the glass. And then the glass. And then yeah. the glass. My goodness. Yeah. And here again, you can purchase whatever you want and sell in your store. Yeah, exactly. I got it. Like a lot about the glass, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting even more of a mix now. Other than taxes, the government doesn't get any money off your sale of these things. Not if you're purchasing off the government no, or anything like that. This is all just you. Yeah. No, that's, that's yeah, good. all the vaporizers and such like that. And in here, we talk about these in the pre Well, a little bit. Did they? You want to talk more about your no. pre Did we talk about them then? That's We did mention. Yes, we did. Okay. Yeah, great store. Yeah. Prices. It looks very nice. I hope one day that uh, you know that there's stores like this that don't have the same restrictions and regulations that you're working within. That uh, you know that the poor people can come in here too. That people want to get the, the higher doses of edibles that they'll be able to come in here too. Uh, and that stores that are primarily for that can have. Like I just want more. That's why yeah. I want more. But if you, but I mean if you go to a, like a liquor store or um, a pub or something like that. It's the same level of license, same level of distribution, right? From from liquor, where they get their liquor is controlled by the same entity that's kind of controlling us. And you don't call them li liquor pubs or uh, government pubs, right? So, yeah. You don't call it a recreational it's... liquor store either, right? right. <laughs> but we all know drinking's fun. Well, <laughs> we call ourselves weed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and alcohol is an interesting comparison. Yeah. Um, it's kind of everywhere. In that way, right? Well, because in that way, in lots of other ways as well. Yeah. Um, the uh, the availability of it. The, the, there's pubs and restaurants, lounges, bars, liquor right? stores. Everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, so not much restriction that. on that. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of people that are selling you wine that they brewed out of the back trunk of their car in the parking lot of the liquor stores right. anymore. Exactly. Uh, because the government's got a, a price that people yeah. find, you know, reasonable. It's a commercial market. It's a com and it's been kind of left up to that, although I guess the government takes a fair amount of tax on that as well. But still, yeah. uh, here, this is a different thing with yeah. cannabis. because. Why? Because the government stores, I mean, I know why can't. fundamentally. Government but I license mean, stores and license stores can't fully replace the people that would sell it to you that have grown up for themselves. Yeah, we don't want to either. I don't want you know, to. Right. There's I mean, definitely the, a need the, for the The problem with this is, is that there's an active protection racket being run yeah. by the government with tax dollars to make sure that there is nobody in your parking lot that's got some bags of weed that they grew themselves because you're a store where you attract people. And I, know, I know you don't want those people out there, and that would be an interesting deal. But in, in all the different forms that cannabis is sold to people, um, you know, on the un unregulated marketplace, those need to exist. You know, there's no reason why they can't exist alongside a commercial store. So, um, I'm glad you're an ally of mine, Carol. Yeah. And you know, you always have it, and you always go. You know, doing all that farmers market and stuff is fantastic. Are you my products? Are you Not all retailers And there's people out there that need to get their weed from people who will stand behind their products. There's medical users that want to know what they're buying is the scope and what that and they're not okay just going to a farmer's market or buying off of some guy that says, Hey, I got weed for sale. All of this needs to exist. And that's the point, and that's what we're working towards. And uh, I know we're, we're much more allies than we are. Uh, you know, yeah. Limits, that's for sure. I actually love you, and you know that. I love what you and Don have done for all these years and continue to do. And between all of us, the, the 42 that are still left, you know, uh, we'll continue on until we get it right, until they get it right. And, uh, and you're on the same path, I think, as we are just from that other angle coming at it. So.
I really want to thank you for your time today. Uh, it's been amazing to be able to talk to you about all this stuff. I'm really glad that we did that. Should have done it earlier probably, but uh, you know, we'll do it again. We'll do it again, and uh, we'll check in again and see what's going on. Um, I think Carol would tell you, come into her store, she'll help you out and she'll treat you well. I'm going to tell you, continue to not buy weed from government sources until they get it right. But you can come in here and buy glass and all kinds of other really cool things. The government Vapes. doesn't get a cut, and if anything, that's probably you know, actively not supporting them. Because I'll do that. I'll absolutely do that. And uh, we'll see where we end up with. Uh, there's lots, I guess, I didn't get to because this is not your average show. Um, <laughs> you know, we're not back with. We don't always have Johnny B either. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what I'm more referring to is the fact that we didn't cover much to do with the cannabis substitution program. It's kind of a relief, really, maybe, because it's, we, we nail it every single week. We'll have to send it to the landlord. Exactly. We'll have to send it to the landlord. <laughs> If you wanted a positive show, I guess this is probably... Close enough, not, close not enough. Completely, yeah. Not completely positive. No, but we're still talking major government <laughs> corruption here. We're well, still talking about... I'm this. still positive, and after all these years, of, I'm still positive. And, wow. Yeah, that's it, right? It's yeah. Positive. Yeah. I'm positive here. Uh, great, right. I wish I could get no, a picture of this, but we're live, so... <laughs> Check out Johnny B. I am going to eventually convince yeah. him to come on the show when he makes it into yeah. town. I'll try. I'll drive him in. I'll pick him up. In the meantime, you can check out so much of his stuff on Pot TV in the archives. So he's, if you want to know anything about growing, this is the guy. Always has been. Uh, tell us, Johnny, what's the best place to find your stuff and to get the information that people need? JohnBerfello.com. Just like that. That's how you spell Burfello, right there. Right, right there. there. Okay. Easiest ways is education. There's some stuff, new articles on there. I mean, we keep giving out the education that we're actually looking for and putting out both papers slowly. You'll start seeing all free downloads, I'm not charging anything for anything. Courses, yeah. free courses. Always, so always. I just always want to keep giving back that knowledge that we've learned yeah. what's being passed on from my, from the, from my mentors. Yeah. Johnny, that's an amazing story. And yeah. you're going to come on the show and talk about yeah. it, actually, again. Yeah. 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 Hey, I'll yeah. keep, I will keep bugging them. So keep bugging I, I know. We're all this together. We've got every six or seven hey, wait, times I, I get him. 2024 is coming up, and that's like 420 to me. Yeah. It's like 424, so we've got a great Good. Well, that's good. You know, we got good things happening. We got the, the cannabis day coming up real soon. The glass gathering, as we talked about. We're not done, folks. We're not done. We need to, we need to reunite ourselves, despite the pandemic, despite the, the takeover of our industries. We need to reunite yeah. ourselves. We need to continue to fight for what's right. Is, and uh, is, is just keep going forward. That's it. Right. So write your letters, your make your phone calls, send your emails, do whatever you can. Talk to the media, talk to your friends, talk to politicians. Just you know, keep at it. If we all keep at it, we'll reach critical mass and we'll get all this yeah. stuff done. Make sure while you do that, you look after yourself. Be kind, to those, yeah. be kind to everyone you meet, yeah. but especially those people it's hardest to be kind to. Yeah. And the most important thing, have as much fun as you can. We'll see you next week. Awesome, guys.